status, now I'm a big dog, bet I pull up on the block in a big club, bet yeah. Ride around the city with a stick, all black yeah. Try with a stroke of weed with all that Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello everyone and welcome to Rugby Pass Fan Zone. My name is Jeff Neville and I'm joined today by Grant Davies to talk about what was probably a very impressive French defensive effort and an also very good attacking Irish effort as well. Grant, what do you think of the game overall? Yeah, a quality game. I really enjoyed it. I think um, it was a bit, uh, bit of a slightly less nerve-wracking day for me than, than it was yesterday. So it was, it was interesting just to sit back and watch it. I agree defensively, I thought France were outstanding. Um, Obviously, we talk about defence uh, quite a lot these days, and I, I think they uh, they lived up to it. Um, I thought they managed Heather Trude really well, actually. Um, and then Ireland, it looked like they played a lot more with the with the ball. Um, however, uh, a lot of it was played on the halfway mark. Um, just um, it really struggled for kind of any any concerted territory. Um, they struggled to get attacking platforms, and when they did. Then the line out or set piece let, let them down um, and maybe maybe could have been slightly more uh, more careful with some of the possession they had to a little bit too eager maybe to give away possession when they were at the key positions uh, what, what are your highlights uh, jeff i suppose my highlights were probably the french tries just because of um you know france had nothing for really 28 minutes it was all ireland for the first 25 odd minutes and suddenly france got a chance at 28 and that's all they needed was a spark you know and they played their offload game and i know there was a, a a defensive mistake from Gibson Park and we'll probably get to that in a minute but just to see that French flair just turn on after probably being on the back foot for so long and all they needed was just that one spark um, mm -hmm. and despite the fact that they actually scored that while under the you know while they had a yellow card as well you know they managed that period really really well mm -hmm. um, so that, like I know from an Irish standpoint you know it's weird to have a highlight of a, a French try but it was just such a good you know, they, they, they were so efficient, so clinical, and that's all they needed was one spark, you know. So um, mm. that was that was a big thing for me. But I know you were looking at the 22 entries during the game, and I don't like basing games around statistics or anything like that, but I think the 22 entries probably tells its own story, does it? Yeah, definitely. I think um, you look at kind of, like I said, that territory possession concept, um, and these uh, 22 entries, by the way, are collected by uh, at Simon Gleave on, on Twitter, if, uh, if any of you guys want to check him out. Uh, it's really interesting. So uh, France have had five 22 entries in total. Ireland have had four 22 entries. Uh, and the reason 22 entries are that important is because you've got a higher chance of scoring a try. So to put it to count the 22 entry, you have to be in a controlled possession within the opponent's 22 uh, and to be be able to maintain possession in there. So just passing through wouldn't, wouldn't count. Now, interestingly, Ireland only had one 22 entry after the 24th minute. And then if you cast your minds back, I know your mind would be frazzled slightly with the, the, the with the finish of the game. But if you cast your mind back, Ireland actually looked looked they had some decent control, and then that that James Low try disallowed, and it, it seemed to really twist at that point. To, and France have scored their all of their points in that last fifty six minutes. So interesting, the yellow card, James Low's. Uh, Disallowed try. Those two moments seemed to go in favour of France, even though it was France that suffered the yellow card. James Lowe's disallowed try looking at Fiku in that in that situation just to grab the boot and dot it down. You know, he's France's defensive leader for a reason. And I imagine Sean Edwards would have been looking at that absolutely delighted with what his defensive captain did. And, you know, lo loaded very well. He scores lots of those tries, you know, and, and banging over the last defender and dotting down in the corner, especially mm -hmm. for Leinster. But, you know, Fiku just to have that presence of mind, just to grab the boot, dot it down and know that he has the TMO and all the angles to help him out as well. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic defending from him and very, very quick thinking, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And it's it's funny you should say the twenty the 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 twenty two entries and people might think, well, 
Ronan Kelleher scored a try after the 24th minute, but it's probably important just to say that his wasn't a, his wasn't phases. His was just a, a defensive mm-hmm. line or a, an attacking lineup that actually went wrong for Ireland, but ultimately he scored off and he just ran in himself. Yeah. But um, I, I felt um, what was a big point in the game was probably the lineup myself, because I mean, if you look at the lineup in the first half, Ireland had seven lineups and they were all perfect. Um, France had seven as well. The first four were quite messy. And it's only when France got a got a hold of their lineout, and it was actually their second positive lineout, which was their sixth overall, that led to their first try. You know, mm-hmm. um, and it's quite funny because in the second half, Ireland only had two lineouts from my count, and it was their, you know, the first lineout didn't work, the second one did, but it was mm-hmm. actually the lineout that didn't work that they scored off ultimately. Yeah. Which is very very strange, you know. Um, but in the second half, you know, France had nine lineouts, which just kind of showed, I suppose, Ireland's game in that second half was just trying to put the pressure back on France or to relieve pressure from themselves mm-hmm. rather than create anything, which was quite, you know, and quite disappointing in my eyes, considering the first 40 was probably the best attack mm-hmm. I've seen from Ireland in a long time. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's interesting. Some of the comments uh, that are coming through, we'll probably pick up some of them. Uh, Sean Walsh, thank you for your comments. And please do check your loads of comments in, everybody. Um, and indeed, uh, don't be afraid to hit the like button as well. That always helps the stream. Uh, so does that new Faddle's mindset and approach change with team selection? No, the title is out of reach. Uh, do you think he'll use his most opportunity blood new players and start, and start them? Uh, really cool question. Um, and that's, that's an interesting one as a, as a coach. Uh, this is obviously a World Cup cycle, um, and we're kind of midway through that World Cup cycle. And I would certainly anticipate that there's an opportunity you now to maybe look at look at some of the, these other players. Um, I, think I thought uh, Ross Byrne uh, been able to be coming on and, and have an opportunity uh, at ten. I thought that that's an opportunity to you know, see see him a little bit more. Obviously, keep some parks at the start and. Those kind of guys, I think you've really got to look at uh, look to the future. Personally, it's it's a perfect opportunity. Um, however, his job is also it's, it's a lot of pressure in international rugby, and you've got to make sure that you win international matches. So mixing it up is, is going to be balanced a little bit. There. What's your thoughts on that, Jeff? Before we chuck in think, a couple think, of comments. I, I, I think your last point there is bang on. At the end of the day, it's professional sport and you need to win games. Like that's his job. That's his profession. And as well as that, that's the first time Ireland have lost the first two opening games of the Six Nations. And if you want to talk about it, was Farrell under pressure coming into this from certain sections and certain fans? Well, he's under more pressure now, you know, just and you can look at the two losses and you can say, yeah, they were quite narrow losses. But at the end of the day, there's no highlight reel on, a, on the losing column or on a scorecard. So. I think, yes, while he will bring in new players, you know, I, th- I felt Ross Byrne was excellent when he came on, especially when he decided mm-hmm. to kick the penalty without actually consulting anyone and then nailed it. Like, that's great confidence and he'll only grow from that. But yeah, yeah. in terms of will he change his selection process or will he look to blood new players in order, or sorry, and cast aside the Six Nations? I don't think so, because at the end of the day, professional sport is professional sport. It's his livelihood. It's the player's livelihood. Um, winning's a habit. I think the competition's too important to the IRFU and, you know, money coming in and everything like that too. So, mm-hmm. I mean, while it would be great to blood new players and uh, just looking at a picture of Ruddock there, he was, I thought he was unbelievable today. He had a clear out just after Jalibert hit the post in the 72nd minute and his clear out was on the money. If it wasn't, it would have been another penalty France absolutely for holding on in the ground. So he had a, he had a brilliant inclusion today and we talked about him last week too. But mm-hmm. in terms of just blood and new players for the sake of it, because we've lost two games, I don't see it happening just because of the the professional nature of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair point. There's a couple of comments about Ross Byrne, and you won't get any disagreement from me. I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Ross Byrne. I, th- I think he controls the game really nicely. Just become a couple of the other the comments coming through. Actually, quite a few that reference the kicking game. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Van Juman has talked about uh, the set piece moves and did they run run a great deal of them? Uh, and there's a couple of the comments up there as well about, about the kicking game. And, that was definitely one of my reflections during the game. I was actually quite pleased that they were trialing, playing around the halfway. Um, I think teams are sometimes too quick to kick there. I thought it was quite nice that they tried to manipulate the backfield, um, kick through then to try and put some pressure on, but generally those those balls were either going over the dead ball line or they were going into touch, which is, uh, it's fine if you're going to go to touch, if you're going to really pressure your opposition's line out, but I, I didn't really feel that Ireland did that, particularly in the second half. I think... France were just comfortable and they played like a team that were ahead. Um, and I actually thought the Jolly Ben in particular, and um, I thought that he had a bit more of a measured game today. He managed the backfield really well. So when Ireland then kicked through, he was more than happy to pick up. I thought Dulan was outstanding as well in the backfield. His uh, his small moments, a little bit of footwork just to get around the chasing tackler. Uh, I thought Jim Blow actually did really well. I put lots of pressure on the outside, but. Guys like Dulan, I thought Banson was was outstanding in the uh, in the backfield when he when he got caught back there. Um, so 
yeah, I would, uh, I would agree with a lot of the comments. I, I thought the the kicks would have been really useful if Ireland were three, four points ahead, but they weren't. France were, uh, and they were then pressurising the line out, and they, they weren't able to get possession back from it. Um, so just keep going with a couple of these uh, couple of these comments. Some really cool ones coming through. Um, Mr. Banjuman felt Earls was hard done by to be sub for Um your, your thoughts on that one, Jeff? Well, when I saw Earls coming off, uh, I thought he had a great game, to be honest. And when I saw him coming off, I was a bit surprised. But I think just after he came off the pitch, I'm pretty sure Lowe kicked a clear and kicked there again. And that kind of, to me, made the decision in my head. That's why he came off. I thought Keenan had a great game. Um, so I'm not surprised he didn't come off, but I think Lowe stayed on the pitch despite a big defensive error for the second French try. I think he stayed on the pitch because of his boot. Um, but at the same mm-hmm. time, I think we didn't need to be kicking the ball away. Like we needed a score, not France. And just to pick up on your point on the, the kicking game, when France went ahead, they were more than happy to kick the ball back. And mm-hmm. uh, as and you can just tell by the second half, the number of lineouts France had compared to Ireland, they were more than happy to kick the ball to Ireland, let Ireland clear and take the line out and keep possession. So, um, no, I, 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 I don't know if um, saying Earls was hard done by is fair to say, because at the end of the day, it was a tactical substitution in order to keep Lowe's boot on the pitch, I think. But mm-hmm. I, th- I felt Earls had a great game. Um, I saw over Twitter there the last while that, um, especially over the last week, that people were just kind of slamming Earls for some strange reason. And I don't know where that narrative came from. He had, he gave away or he made two mistakes against Wales last week, granted in a short period of time. But over the last couple of years, he's been excellent. So, um, no, I thought he backed himself up today. I thought Earls had a fantastic game, but ultimately Boots or um, Lowe's boot was just an extra weapon that Earls doesn't have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, and having a left boot as well. I mean, uh, you, you can't uh, can't overstate how important that left boot is. It just gives you an extra extra angle, allows you to kick when you're under pressure, which you often are on the edge of the pitch, and then be able to bring the ball in field or keep it right on touchline. So, such a such an important thing to have. And it's interesting Ireland have moved more so to using him as a first receiver off a set piece. And getting a kick in because it, you know, he's, he's got a big boot, which is accurate as well. Um, Hal does make a couple of comments uh, that Earls was, Earls was tired after after a lot of work, and can only agree. Uh, Dupont uh, is, is, a, is a big feature in the chat, and uh, it comes no surprise that I'm a, I'm a massive fan of Dupont. I think he is outstanding. And there's three or four thank you, Ben Smith, for your, for, for your comments, and uh, Ollie H, thank you for your comments. Totally agree. Uh, 2021. Player of the year, just just give it to him. Just give it to him already. Uh, I think he's already there. I think, and it's the small things that he does. It, it is, it's not the outstanding breakthrough and runs fifty meters to go and score a try. It's the three meters he runs from a ruck area, fixes his eyes, gives a ball back inside. Um, now we're interested. He got absolutely leathered the first time he did it. Absolutely leathered. Didn't put him off. Did it again. Got somebody else leathered. The third time. Straight through, and I thought I thought that that's quality. That that's a player who doesn't get put off by not quite coming off on one occasion or indeed the second. He still kept going, and that that break is pretty pivotal in France. Really, they put them in a really good position inside the twenty-two, and, and we, we saw we saw points then come later with the other penalty three four minutes later. So key key moments and, and players like that they're just just filled with them. Um, I know you're a big fan of Dupont and you did a fantastic piece of analysis there the last day on him too, but it is those little moments that he makes. And even if you look at Alavon's try, he threw an offload without looking. He threw the same one last week against Italy and a try came from both of them. So it's the fact mm-hmm. that he's just not afraid to play his own game. It's the fact he's given that freedom, I suppose, just to go out and express himself and do what he wants. And that's, you know, when you have a player like him, in my eyes, he is probably pound for pound the best player in the world at the moment, regardless of position. And when you have a player like that, You know, as you said in your own analysis as well, that's on YouTube and on the different social medias, you know, that's what you want from a player like that, just to go out, express yourself. You know, if it's on, go for it, because it's obvious the coaches trust him and they trust him for a reason. He makes the right decisions again and again and again. The only mistake I saw him make, I think, in that game was he sniped and he passed, I think, to Stander at one stage. But again, Mm -hmm. that didn't stop him. He showed an awful lot of maturity, literally, as that comment says, and he managed the tempo of the game absolutely brilliantly, you know. So I think when you have a player like Dupont, you just let him do what he wants, and he will. He he'll reward you every time. Yeah, totally agree. And uh, if you want to pop over to my YouTube channel once you, once we're finished, uh, Gerang Davis coaching and analysis, uh, you'll see a Dupont video right at the top of the stream. Uh, pretty popular at the minute, so do get over and have a look at that one. Uh, and a little bit on Jolly Bear as well. Um, pick up on some of these other comments. Uh, there's a couple last about Casey. Um, 
Twitter was was going slightly crazy as again towards the end of the game with lots of people commenting on KC. I was starting to think, well, surely at, at this point in the game where maybe you need something a little bit different, you need something to light things up. Uh, I thought there was an opportunity to to get him on. So, uh, Robert, uh, yeah, thank you for your comment. I, I agree. Um, I, I think uh, I think it would be nice to see him come on. What's your thoughts, Nacho? Yeah, absolutely. He got a lot of love over the social medias there this week. And I, for one, I'm all for it when it comes to Craig Casey. And I felt, especially the last maybe 10, 15 minutes when the game was broken up that bit, you had ring rows looking for gaps everywhere. And I think if you had the likes of Casey looking to snipe or to come off shoulders just like that, I think the opportunity was there. Not only that, I think, you know, at the same time, he, he's an all-around player and he's, he's, he's a fantastic player and he has all the basics and his attributes are fantastic mm-hmm. as well. So, I mean, why not get him on the pitch for the last 10, 15 minutes when, you know, Gibson Park, he, he, I'm not saying he did anything wrong. You know, I didn't, I'm not mm-hmm. saying he's incompetent or anything like that, but certainly Casey's game, I think that suited Casey's game to come on and just whip passes, to snipe, to look for gaps. He's so quick as well, especially mm-hmm. when he's running ball in hand. And he, like, I, I haven't seen him make bad decisions for Munster yet, so I don't know, if, you know, if... if you know, if people think maybe he would have made bad decisions because of an experience, I don't really mm-hmm. think that, to be honest with you, because he wouldn't be in that setup if he would. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'd, I'd have loved to have seen Casey come on, at, 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 you know, that maybe the last 10 minutes uh, today. I think the opportunity was there. And even if we look at his pass, if we were going to go for the drop goal, if we if we did get in a position for the drop goal near the end of the game, Casey's pass is a bullet um, and it's it's on the money as well. So, you know, I don't I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have any fear throwing him in at all for the last 10 minutes there today. Yeah, I think uh, we won't get any disagreement from me on that one either. Um, lots of comments about Olivon. Uh, thank you, Graham, for, for your comments. And there's a couple more further up. Um, Olivon is a superstar. Uh, we, we talked with Dupont and we talked with the back line. I thought Fiku, by the way, we mentioned Fiku. How good was he today in his, in his ball carry and answer his defence? Olivon is he's, he's one of those players that does outstanding things repeatedly all game long, never tires. Uh, and I actually really, really like uh, his his contact behavior is just how quick he is to make a tackle back on his feet 100% accurate decision making as to whether the challenge to go back in the line and then you see him give some of those offloads they are coming from him that's, that's leading to those tries um, outstanding player but leadership as well Jeff incredible captain yeah, 100%. And we talk, we do talk about the things DuPont does, but he does that because of the platform that's set for him. Mm-hmm. That platform is set for him through the leadership of Olivon and the way he leads his forwards around the pitch, you know. And, you know, there was a comment there that said right captain at the right time. I think he would be the right captain regardless because he just brings people with him, even when France were in turmoil there two, three years ago, whenever it was, and everybody was casting them off and not giving them a hope. I think Olivon comes in there. He just leads from example. Every, like you said, everything he does, even the basics, they're all superb. He's just brilliant in everything he does. And um, last week against Italy, I think he took uh, seven lineouts on himself or something like that. And that's leading from the front. You know, that's that's just correct call. And that's just making sure you're giving your nine and your backs the best platform possible. And there's a brilliant, that's an absolutely brilliant comment there saying Olivon for France is what Lua Tua is for Bristol. And I absolutely think so. You know, um, unless you're keeping an eye on him, you're not going to see all the little things and all the, you know, what you're not going to see all the things he does that makes him a superstar, especially the work off the ball he does to be in the right places at the right time. Um, I think Galtier looking at Olivon towards the World Cup as a captain, you know, I think even if he keeps continuing in that vein, he's going and France going to that World Cup with Olivon as captain. You know, mm-hmm. the coaches are almost just facilitators and Olivon is just leading and running everything himself. I think he's absolutely fantastic. And this is probably a long winded way of just. You know, me agreeing with you. I think he's an absolute <laughs> superstar, yeah. No, I like it. Uh, so Sean Giovanni has uh, cited and mixed things up in, in the in the comments. Uh, it's a big statement, Sean. Um, but I am going to draw on it because I think it's uh, it, it's a statement that it's not the first time I've actually seen comments like that from various parts of the world. So I am going to address it. Uh, and I think we need to be really, really careful when we're throwing out comments like that. I think we can be really mindful that referees have got a big job to do. Uh, there is a huge number of things going on at the same time, um, and there's always decisions in the game that we that we don't like. I mean, yesterday's red card, a huge moment, a hugely contentious moment. Um, I don't remember a game of rugby without a contentious moment, uh, and, and, and it, it'll always go through as a part of sport. Um, and today's game is no exception. Obviously, got the got the yellow card. I mean, was that it? Was it a trip? Uh, was an overt? Yeah, and yet it seems like a, seems like a fair decision. I mean, is. It is is that you, you can make all, all the comments you want about it, but the referees are there to maintain points of law uh, and under the pressure that they're under, particularly currently with all the pressure from the media, 
they do a pretty grand job, really. Fair play to them. Uh, just, so, just, just, just to add in on that as well, I mean, you can talk about the referees' decisions all you want, but I mean, Scotland are the ones who decided not to kick three yesterday, not the referee. So, I mean, at the end of the day, to say rugby is rigged, that's a massive statement. That's, you know, that's um, it's a bit tough. And looking at Louis Rees Samet there, a picture of him from yesterday, he was outstanding. But Pierce was outstanding today. I absolutely agree. The WhatsApp group I'm in as well was just blowing up. Uh, he communicated so well. I felt, uh, mm -hmm. regardless of language, absolutely no language barrier, explained everything. And especially at the start of the second half when there was that head clash, straight away blew the whistle, right on it. Absolutely no chaos, no nothing, good chat. Um, I thought he was fantastic today. Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Clear, concise, to the point. Uh, I thought uh, the, the whole refereeing team, uh, Christoph Ridley on the, on the touchline, what I like about ARs is when they genuinely assist. I mean, the call assistant referees, when they when they do when they do that and they're really clear and they clearly watch them. And when he stepped on with the trip, he was in no doubt that it was a trip and he was nailed on because he's, he's playing pay such close attention to it, which, which sounds like an obvious statement, but I think ARs can sometimes maybe become a little bit distracted with what's going on. There's loads of movement, looking off the ball. He was right on the money, uh, and, he, and he picked up an angle that the referee couldn't quite see uh, because of the nature of, of the play. I thought he was absolutely, absolutely bang on. Um, question there, Patrick O'Neill, definitely pick up on that one. That one gets me excited, Patrick. Thank you for that one. Uh, is Sean Edwards the best defence coach in world rugby right now? There are very few people who could potentially say anything other than a, a yes. And while there's a definite Welsh bias, uh, Sean Edwards is effectively a Welsh man from Wigan. Um, in, in my eyes, I think he's been outstanding. And I think he's really adapted the culture of the French mindset towards defending. And I think that's fed into their attack as well. Um, and I don't know, there'll be lots of different opinions on that one, but uh, I think uh, I think he's been pretty outstanding for, for them. And I, th I think he's... I think he's implied this kind of um, thought process of defense is our work and attack is our reward. And if you look at how much France enjoy attacking and how they look with ball in hand, how they look without ball in hand. I mean, first 25 minutes, I think they barely touched the ball. And I know they did, but like they barely touched the ball first 25 minutes, but they didn't look out of sorts at all. They were controlled. They had every like they were running past decoy runners, knowing that this was going to happen. They were well drilled. They, they didn't get sucked in. Um, I thought Fiku was unbelievable all throughout the game today and organizing everything. And he deserves an awful lot of credit as well as Sean Edwards. Mm -hmm. But it is ultimately Sean Edwards who instills this defensive pattern. And, you know, you just look at every team he's ever worked with and it's always worked, you know, and that's not mm -hmm. coincidence, especially not after this amount of time. You know, you could say maybe one team, but something, but not like Lions, Wales, now France, Wasps when he was there. Ultimately, he's a man who just keeps learning and who just he, he he invests heavily. I remember doing a podcast with him there a couple of weeks ago, and he said he takes it personally when the defense doesn't show up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're investing yourself that much in it, it means that you genuinely care if you are taking it personally when it doesn't mm -hmm. work. It means you're going to keep working on it, too. And yeah, yeah. I, I genuinely do think he's the best defensive coach in the world. Yeah. Yeah, how do I argue with that? Uh, we've got uh, we've a couple of comments. Um Maybe give a couple of thoughts on some of the other games and some of the comments related to that. So, uh, who's in the best position for the championship? Is one of the one of the comments from Robert. Thank you for that. Um, and a couple of other players picked out as well. But just probably pick out on on that in the bigger con context of the tournament. Obviously, Wales now two from two. That's pretty much how many points they've won by in total. In fact, uh, and then we've got uh, obviously England now have, uh, have, have bounced back after their after their first defeat so after after beating Italy yesterday. Um, so we've got. They're, they're still still in the mix uh, with the tournament. Ireland right now, you could probably say that they're, they're out of the out of the tournament mix at that point, and then France, of course. So out out of them, that uh, next week you got obviously on two weeks time you got Wales England huge Wales win that it then puts it on that on the France match which sends sends Chile as to probably a tournament decide that in, in reality. Um, I think uh, England France will be it will be a massive game so. All to play for. I mean, uh, right now, would I would I want to put my money on anything at this point in time? Uh, I'm I'm always going to say the Wales are always in, in a, with a uh, a chance of it. So um, I think uh, right right now, I think Wales Wales France as, as probably where I'm leading at the minute as, as my top two. But that's that's a very biased Welshman's uh, mindset. Uh, and then leave a, leave a few to wrap up there, Jeff. 
Well, folks, thanks a million for joining us on Rugby Pass today for the Fan Zone. If you'd like to see more from me or from Grant, you can join me on the Loose Head on either Twitter or Instagram, and same with Grant at Davies GD on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks a million for joining us today, folks, and I hope you really enjoyed the analysis. And thanks very much for all your comments and questions and for interacting with us today. Thanks a million, folks. All the best. Cheers, everybody.